just how stable is benzene relative to, say, a hypothetical cyclic molecule lacking resonance in conjugation, or to hexatriene, a comparable acyclic molecule? One way to assess this involves considering the enthalpy or heat of hydrogenation for benzene and comparing it to heats of hydrogenation for other related molecules. In an ideal world, we'd like to compare the heat of hydrogenation of benzene, which has resonance and conjugation out the wazoo, to a molecule in which we're somehow able to turn off resonance and conjugation, a molecule in which we still have a six-membered ring so that we still end up with cyclohexane as the hydrogenation product, but in which the double bonds and single bonds are now distinct and resonance has essentially been turned off. So that's something like this where the double bonds are shorter than the single bonds, and I've drawn that in an exaggerated fashion, and we sort of disallowed resonance arbitrarily. The difference in the enthalpy of hydrogenation for the resonance-containing benzene and the molecule lacking resonance, which we'll call cyclohexatriene, it's a hypothetical molecule with three double bonds alternating like this without resonance, gives us insight into the resonance stabilization energy of benzene. You'll also hear this referred to as the aromatic stabilization energy, since in turning off the resonance, essentially what we're doing is turning off the aromaticity in the molecule as well. There's a bit of an argument here that we have to make, because the hypothetical molecule that we want to compare to benzene is not a real molecule, right? This cyclohexatriene with distinct double and single bonds is not a real molecule. But we can still estimate its would-be enthalpy or heat of hydrogenation. And here's how. Let's think about cyclohexane as being the zero line on this enthalpy graph. So that hydrogenation gets us down to the enthalpy of cyclohexane. Let's start with the enthalpy released when cyclohexene is hydrogenated. This is a compound with one double bond within a six-membered ring structure. The delta H here is about negative 28.7 kilocalories per mole. Cyclohexene contains one double bond within its structure. How much enthalpy would be released if we hydrogenated a comparable molecule with three double bonds within its structure? Well, ignoring the impact of conjugation and resonance, which is the whole point of this hypothetical exercise, the simplest guess is that because there are three times as many double bonds in cyclohexatriene as there are in cyclohexene, three times the amount of energy will be released when cyclohexatriene is hydrogenated. And so we can estimate the heat of hydrogenation of this molecule as negative 28.7, the enthalpy of hydrogenation for cyclohexene, times 3. This comes out to negative 86 kilocalories per mole. Due solely to conjugation, we should expect that the enthalpy of hydrogenation of benzene is going to be considerably lower than our hypothetical cyclohexatriene. But exactly how much? Well, think back to our first look at resonance stabilization energy in the last lesson. The difference wasn't huge. It was something like 3 to 6 kilocalories per mole for a conjugated system relative to a comparable system without conjugation. Where does benzene show up? Well, benzene is on a whole nother level, as it turns out. In fact, I'm actually going to erase this and draw it even lower. The heat of hydrogenation of benzene is just a little bit more than half as much as the heat of hydrogenation of our hypothetical cyclohexatriene. The amount of enthalpy released is only 49.7 kilocalories per mole. Holy moly, <laughs> right? We've gone from negative 86 for a hypothetical molecule lacking conjugation and aromaticity to negative 49.7 for benzene, which of course has the conjugation and aromaticity. The gap here is then 36.3 kilocalories per mole. And this is what we call the aromatic stabilization energy, or aromatic SE, of benzene. The reason we don't just call it resonance stabilization energy is it's on a whole nother level from the resonance stabilization energy of, for example, an acyclic conjugated system. Benzene is much, much more stable than a related molecule with the same structure in which aromaticity has just been turned off. We'll look at aromatic stabilization energies for other types of aromatic compounds as well, and what you're going to notice is that all of these are much, much larger than the stabilization due to conjugation alone in something like cyclohexadiene or an acyclic conjugated system. Those are rarely more than 10 kilocalories per mole, but the vast majority of aromatic stabilization energies are well above that. Aromaticity is kind of in a league of its own. 